Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to my Strixhaven Draft Guide. In this video, I am going to be teaching you everything you need to know about Strixhaven Draft, but before I dive in, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. Without further ado, let's dive on in. In this video, I am going to be discussing the set mechanics, I'm going to be going over the archetypes, I'm going to go over the top three commons for each color, I will show you the combat tricks in the set, and I will go over traps, combos, and more. So starting things off with the set mechanics, in Strixhaven there are modal double-faced cards, there is the learn and lesson mechanic, there is the magecraft mechanic, and there is the ward mechanic. Modal double-faced cards are cards that you can play as either the front side of the card or the back side of the card. It's pretty much as simple as that, and since they are primarily focused at the mythic and rare slots, we will not be discussing them much in this guide because they do not come up all that often in Limited. However, the learn and lesson mechanic will be coming up all of the time as it, as it is one of the feature mechanics of Strixhaven. Essentially, whenever you play a card with learn, you get to look in your sideboard and fetch a card with lesson. So having multiple different lessons to go fetch for the exact situation that you're in is going to be very practical when you have learn cards in your deck. Next up is Magecraft, and this is a pretty simple mechanic. It simply triggers whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, and then the card tells you what it does. Next up is the Ward mechanic, and this is a protection mechanic for your creatures that forces your opponent to play pay an extra cost whenever they target your creature with a spell. So for example, with Owl and Shield Mage, they have to pay 3 life, and with other cards in the set, they might have to pay some amount of mana. Next up, we're going to be talking about the archetypes of the set, and since Strixhaven is a 5 archetype set, they become even more important. The colleges are Silver Quill, which is white black, Prismari, which is blue red, Wither Bloom, which is black green, Lorehold, which is red white, and Quandrix, which is green blue. These are the 5 uh archetypes in the set, and it is very advisable to stick to one of those. Finding the open college is critical to your success in draft. To accomplish this, try to stay open for longer, and also put higher emphasis on gold cards, because in a typical set, there's only one color combination out of 10 that you can play the gold cards in, but in Strixhaven, there is one color combination out of five, so you're far more likely to be able to play the powerful gold cards that you take early, and you can use those to read which college is open. Going into the college analysis, we will be starting off with the <laughs> white-black college, also known as Silver Quill. It is a college that is fairly aggressive and focused around plus one plus one counters, so using cards like Star Pupil and Spiteful Squad, along with Promising Dusk Mage, which rewards you for putting counters on your creatures, you can curve out on your opponent and use those counters to keep your creatures large. You also have access to powerful plus one plus one counter payoffs like Dueling Coach and Tenured Ink Caster, and Killian lets you cast your buff spells for your creatures and also your removal spells for cheaper, while being a great home to put counters on himself. Finally, another perk of Silver Quill is that it gets access to a very quality lesson in the form of Inkling Summoning, because three mana for a 2-1 flyer is actually a pretty solid rate, and then also great removal spells in black and white, with Clothing Statement, Mage Hunter's Onslaught, among others. Next up, we're going to be looking at Prismari, which is the blue-red guild, which is primarily focused on casting spells. Now, there are two main directions that you can take your Prismari deck building around the same base of cards. So if you have Spectacle Mage, Prismari Pledge Mage, and Maelstrom Muse, you can either use those flyers and cost cheapening effects and big defensive bodies for a more controlling role, where you cast large spells like Creative Outburst, Elemental Masterpiece, and Practical Research, or you can use this same base of creatures to go in a more aggressive direction and complement your pledge mages and spectacle mages and flyers with frost trickster type cards prismari apprentice which can gain unblockable and snow day for a strong tempo finish so when you're drafting blue red you're going to want to know which version of the deck you're playing are you playing a more controlling deck that wins the late game and just wants to survive or are you playing a more tempo oriented deck that tries to kill your opponent before they can stabilize and win in their powerful late game 
Moving on to Black Green, also known as Wither Bloom, we have a deck that is focused around sacrifices and life gain synergies. So Blood Researcher is a key card for the deck that whenever you gain life, you get to put a counter onto the Blood Researcher, and that works very well with the lesson that you gain access to in the uh, uh, Wither Bloom guild, which is Pest Summoning. So you get two 1-1 one, one black and green pest tokens that die into gaining you a life. So when those die, your blood research gets larger. You can also find that pest summoning with hunt for specimens. Now keep in mind that the pest summoning and all of these lessons that we've been looking at that create the creature tokens are hybrid mana. So you can use either black or green to cast the spell. So technically you can also play this card in your silver quill deck or something of that nature, but it really fits nicely with wither bloom, which is why I am showing it here. Other key cards for Witherbloom include Brackish Trudge, which is another way to gain advantage from gaining life, Dinah Soul Steeper, which lets you sacrifice your pest tokens and also gain life, uh, and then Overgrown Arch, which can gain you consistent life over time, and then eventually cash in for a lesson from your sideboard. You also gain access to some powerful removal in the form of Mortality Spear, Deadly Brew, which is a great effect for getting creatures back from your graveyard while sacrificing a meaningless pest, and then Demigoth Woe Eater, which is just a massive body if you can keep it in play by sacrificing pests, and is also fine to sacrifice to other effects itself. Moving on to Red White, it actually is very interesting this time because Lorehold is a deck that has the potential to play Control, especially if you get access to Quintorious Field Historian and Returned Past Caller, because those can get you some nice late game value in a color combination that typically lacks that sort of thing. Pilgrim of the Ages is a nice way to get some of that value at common. However, Red White also can play an aggressive role using cards like Lorehold Pledge Mage, Blood Age General, and Combat Professor. Combat Professor in particular is quite nice because it can buff any of your creatures, so while it cracks in for two in the air, you can make sure that your small ground creatures can still connect. But if you do want to focus on some of the themes of Lorehold, therefore using the graveyard and returning cards to your hand from your graveyard or exiling cards from your own graveyard, you can still use that in your aggressive plan with a card like Fuming Effigy, which can start pinging your opponent out as you use cards like Pillar Drop Rescuer and Illustrious Historian for extra value while you kill your opponent with a damage. The final college in Strixhaven is <laughs> Quandrix, which is uh, a college that is focused on getting big mana and big fractal tokens. So you can use a card like Eureka Moment to draw some cards and put extra lands into play, and then cast a massive fractal summoning and supplement that with cards like Biomathematician, which makes fractals and grows your other fractals. You can also use that extra mana to cast something like Bookworm, uh, activate Zimone Quandrix Prodigy to start drawing two cards, and then use Kelpie Guide as a tapping uh, rem temporary removal spell, or just use it as an extra mana source. There's also in order to get to that 8 mana, you're going to want to be using cards like Quandrix Cultivator and Quandrix Apprentice at the uncommon slot and Field Trip at the common slot. There's also the potential in Green Blue to play a more tempo-oriented aggro deck if you are using the Quandrix Pledge Mage and Karok Wrangler alongside cheap instants and sorceries like uh, Mentor's Guidance, which is especially good with the Quandrix Pledge Mage and Karok Wrangler because it will copy itself and therefore give you two triggers. So be on the lookout for not only the aggressive variants of the Green Blue decks, but also for that controlling ramp strategy that plays massive spells. Moving on to the commons, we are going to be analyzing, starting off with white. At number one is Combat Professor. It's just a great aggressive card. It has evasion and helps your other creatures punch through. Next is Pilgrim of Ages. It's just a good value engine and keeps coming back in the late game. And finally is Star Pupil, which is a card that looks unassuming, but actually plays a key role in the Silver Quill decks because you, it is a good target for the plus one, plus one counters that you want to put on your creatures and then gets to put those creatures, those counters somewhere else when it dies. Looking at the blue cards, number one is Frost Trickster. This card is just incredibly pushed. Normally this type of card wouldn't have flying, and they just added flying to a card that was already pretty solid, making it a premium common. Next up is Bury in Books. This card gets much better in a controlling shell where you can use its cost reduction more easily, but it is still a solid card in more aggressive blue decks, which means that it is a good pick for number two. And finally, Waterfall Aerialist is a nice evasive creature that is harder to target thanks to Ward, so it's going to do good work in your more aggressive blue decks. Moving on to black, kicking things off is Mage Hunter's Onslaught, which is a great removal spell, especially if you're looking to attack. 
At number two is hunt for specimens, which is a pretty efficient way to get your lessons out of your sideboard, and is especially good considering that black has access to some very powerful lessons. And finally, Lash of Malice. It's important to remember that this gives plus two minus two, not plus two plus two, so you can use this to target your opponent's creatures and pick off their small threats. Moving on to red, at number one is a very efficient removal spell in Heated Debate. At number two is Tome Shredder, which can play offense or defense pretty effectively if you do have instants and sorceries in your graveyard, while also triggering some of your lore hold cards that care about spells about cards leaving your graveyard. And finally, Pigment Storm is a nice catch-all removal spell that can kill a big threat or kill a cheap threat and finish your opponent off. Moving on to green, at number one is Mage Duel, which is a fight spell that can be cast for quite cheap if you are using some other instants and sorceries on your turn. At number two is Field Trip, which is a ramp spell to help you get up to those big mana cards, while also being a learn card so you don't fall behind on action spells to spend your mana on. And at number three is Professor of Zoomancy, which is just a good efficient creature that comes with a token uh, to give you 5-4 worth of stats for only 4 mana, which is quite nice. Looking at some color rankings, at number one is green, backed up by its strong removal spell and a strong removal spell, and then its good ramp plays and just consistent creatures up the curve. At number two is black, thanks in large part to its great removal spells. And at number three is blue, buffed up very heavily by Frost Trickster, which is just a great card. And then at the lower end of the spectrum is red and white. And I do want to note that none of these colors are bad by any means. Uh, and also a large factor in these color rankings is which colleges these are a part of, as I think that the green colleges are quite powerful and maybe the white colleges need a little bit more help than some of the green ones, but they are all still good and worth going for. So don't let these color rankings dissuade you from drafting a color combination. Just maybe use those as a guideline if you're using them as a tiebreaker for a pick. Moving on to the combat tricks that are available in the set. I'm not going to be talking about each and every one of these, but I wanted to show them to you so that you would be aware of what's in the set. So Beaming Defiance, Defend the Campus, and Show of Confidence are the combat tricks available in white. Arcane Subtraction and Burrog Befuddler are the combat tricks available in blue. In particular, it's important not to get blown out by Burrog Befuddler, as that can be a game-losing play. Professor's Warning is the only card you have to be worried about in terms of black combat tricks. In red, they have two, Enthusiastic Study and Sudden Breakthrough, so no one-mana combat trick for red. In green, there is Big Play and Fortifying Draught. And then there are also several more in the gold cards with Infuse with Vitality, Make Your Mark, and Square Up. So those are the combat tricks that you need to be aware of in the set. So if your opponent is leaving up mana or makes a suspicious attack, just think about those cards. Moving on to some cards that are traps and things you should avoid, even if they look appealing, we will start off with Clever Lumamancer. This is getting a lot of hype for Constructed, but it is not great in Limited because a 0-1 just does not do what you want it to do. If you attack your opponent, they're just not going to block, and then you're essentially using your instant speed spells as extra damage to your opponent's face, which is going to put you behind on cards and ultimately lose you the game in many cases. Similarly, Symmetry Sage is not going to do much uh, for the exact same reason. Next is Detention Vortex, which looks great when you see, oh, it's a cheap removal spell, but the fact that your opponent can destroy it for only three mana means that you are not going to want to put this card in your deck. Uh, next is Solve the Equation. It's very appealing if you have a strong instant or sorcery in your deck to want to put extra ways to find it, but in almost all cases, it's not going to be worth spending the extra three mana to go get it. Just imagine if that card cost three more, whether or not you'd still want to be playing a spell that was that inefficient. And number four is Mascot Interception. Now, typically a steel spell is going to be useful in a sacrifice deck because you can take your opponent's creature and then sacrifice it but because red is not a color that uses sacrifice in this set you're not going to be able to sacrifice uh, your opponent's creatures in any of the colleges so typically red black is a sacrifice deck but because red black as a college is not supported you're not going to be able to use that on Strixhaven and then finally spell satchel is a very confusing looking card it looks like it might have some applications but the problem is that if you don't draw it in the exact early game you're not going to be able to build up those counters on it to do anything useful with it and also if you draw in the early game there's a lot of tension between using it for mana and trying to draw cards and overall it's just very inefficient very clunky and not a card you're going to want to put into your deck moving on to some cool combos you can go for in the set starting things off we have unwilling ingredient plus bayou groff that lets you play a five four uh plant dog into play on turn two. You can also substitute unwilling ingredient for eye twitch. In particular, those two cards are nice because when they die, they have some way to get you the card back eventually. And so you don't end up down on cards, even if your opponent answers the groff. 
Next up is Kelpie Guide plus Zimone Quandrix Prodigy. Once you've gotten up to eight lands, you can use your Kelpie Guide to untap your Zimone and activate Zimone twice. While you're building up to eight lands, you can also do something like if you have five mana, tap Zimone to draw a card and then use Kelpie Guide to untap it, then tap the Zimone to put that land into play if you drew a land. So just also keep in mind that Kelpie Guide has a lot of combos. You can use it to untap your creatures to give them essentially vigilance or things like that. So that's mostly a reminder that Kelpie Guide has some pretty cool potential. Next up is one of the comboiest cards in the set, Reflective Golem. You can combo this with all sorts of things when you pay that extra two, such as Make Your Mark, which I do want to note can target your opponent's creatures and you'll still get the token. So if you're attacking your Reflective Golem into your opponent's 3-3, you can play Make Your Mark, pay the extra two, target your opponent's creatures, and opponent's creature, and then you end the uh, exchange up with two three twos. So just something important to note about Make Your Mark. You can also combo Reflective Golem with Charge Through to draw two cards. You can combo it with Exhilarating Elocution once you get up to six mana to make your Reflective Golem a whopping six seven and give all your other creatures plus two plus two. So those are just some of the combos available with Reflective Golem. There's a lot of cool potential there and many more combos that I didn't have time to mention. Finally, if you're looking for a little bit of extra removal in your white decks, you can combine Study Break and Expel to create make Expel useful even if your opponent is not attacking you. Typically, Expel is going to be used when your opponent attacks you, so you can kill the attacking creature before damage happens and uh, exile it forever. But if you're on the front foot and your opponent is not attacking you, uh, you can combine Study Break with Expel to exile your opponent's creature, and you don't even end up down a card because Study Break lets you learn, so you get a lesson out of your sideboard. Moving on to the fixing in the set, there is a good deal of fixing at colorless, though not as much in green as you would come to expect. One of the key cards for fixing is Environmental Sciences, which is a lesson, so that means that any learn card in your deck can turn into fixing if you are trying to splash. Campus Guide and Letter of Acceptance are also fine ways to splash if you have one card that you really want to get into your deck. Emergent Sequence is the only extra fixing available for green that can search up a basic land of any type. That land will be vulnerable to removal, so keep that in mind, but it is a nice card overall if you're trying to ramp or fix your mana. And then finally, there are six different lands at common that can help you with your mana. Archway Commons can help you with any color, so if you're playing three colors or two colors in a splash, more likely you can use Archway Commons. And then there is a campus for all five of the colleges, and all of these campuses are quite powerful. Giving yourself the option of scrying in the late game means that you're going to get flooded less often, and it's really nice to have that activated ability on a tap land that is already good for your mana in your deck. These are high picks, even if you're not going to be splashing, just because of the extra consistency they give your deck. Finally, I have a couple of final tips for you when you are drafting this set. There is no enchantment removal in the set, and by enchantment removal, I mean spells like pacifism or arrest or things that keep your creatures locked down, other than the one mana version that is very bad that I showed you in the traps section. Now, this means that you have to be less fearful of having creatures with die triggers. So, for example, some of the silver quill cards, if they die, they put their counters on something else. Now, a typical risk with that would be that that creature gets put under an enchantment that keeps it from dying, but also keeps it from doing anything. And that is not a risk in this set, so keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is there is no instant speed bounce spell for tokens. There is a bounce spell at sorcery speed in Quandrix that can bounce tokens, and there's also an instant speed bounce spell in blue, but it cannot bounce tokens. So if you are going to be building a big fractal token, or you're going to be trying to make some uh, tokens in your Prismari decks, so, because that Prismari makes four or four elemental tokens, you will be relatively insulated against bounce spells on those tokens. So keep that in mind. There's no enchantment removal uh, for killing your creatures, and there's no instant speed bounce for tokens. So those are just two things that are typically in a set, and you don't need to be as worried. You don't need to be worried about those sorts of things, at least at common and uncommon. That's going to do it for this draft guide for Strixhaven though. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Remember that if you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and comment if you have any questions or feedback. And in the comment section down below, leave hashtag rule the school because you're going to be ready to crush all of your foes in your Strixhaven drafts. That's going to do it for this draft guide though. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you next time.